Alrighty, folks, we've got a lot to talk about here. You guys all know Candace Owens. Candace Owens is by far uh, the dumbest conservative pundit out there. She's legitimately insane. She actually, a lot of you guys don't know this, she actually rented an apartment for six months, which was, I believe, $3,000 a month in rent. She never paid any of it. She never paid for any of that rent. She got kicked out and is in a lawsuit with her former landlord saying that basically uh, she was the victim of some mold in the apartment that wasn't cleaned properly and that caused her a bunch of uh, brain problems and stuff like that. No joke. You can look this up, by the way. I'm being serious. Um, but she's legitimately crazy. You know, watch her talk to Joe Rogan on climate change. Uh, you know, you know her controversial comments. She's a dumb person. Let's keep it real. No, real, no college education, of course. Uh, just no real knowledge or any sort of logical skills whatsoever. None at all. She has now gone so far down. She has now stooped to the level of an anti-vaxxer. Being an anti-vaxxer is one of the, you know, worst, one of the dumbest slash most dangerous things you could be. Because obviously, you know, vaccines save lives. We will get into that in a second here. But... Uh, it's legitimately one of the dumbest positions you can hold in society. Those two being anti-vax and, and and flat earth, right? If you're one of those two people, you're in the group of dumbest people on the planet. No joke, seriously. So here's what happened, okay? Some random person, you'll see this all the time on different social media, especially Facebook, but, you know, Twitter as well, where these, uh, you know, people who are Republicans often, they're usually MAGAites who are idiots, um, and they'll say stuff like, oh... Blah, blah, blah happened because of vaccine, which is total bogey and total nonsense, obviously. But this is, you know, 1,000, you know, whatever, 1,965 of that, you know, number, you know, n number 1,956 says, I watch my daughter suffer every day because of the HPV shots. I would give my life to go back in time and refuse the shots. Brain damage and seizures suck, which obviously vaccines don't cause brain damage and seizures. Um, so literally not possible. So that's obviously made up. So what a lot of people will do is they'll either attribute other feelings or other things that develop later on uh, to that, or they'll just lie about it. So, you know, you can't confirm stories of random people on social media. But uh, a lot of people, that's what they end up doing. Like I even seen a channel where, you know, it's a really sad story because the person basically developed seizures at like the age of 20 or something. She attributes to that that to getting the wrong vaccine for what was supposed to be a meningitis vaccine. But then she explained that her symptoms were extremely stiff neck and very high fever, which is the symptoms for meningitis. So it's more likely that she actually got meningitis had nothing to do with the vaccine. Um, because vaccines, you know, aren't going to cause you much other than, you know, for a lot of people, it'll cause like some arm pain and stuff. You know, I actually got a Tdap like a month ago or something. I didn't feel anything. <laughs> I didn't feel anything whatsoever. Um, but she responds to this saying, I had a terrible reaction to the HPV shot when I was 16 years old, and I cannot believe our government is trying to mandate it. Mandating vaccinations against diseases that are not contagious. What? And therefore pose no danger to the public as a dangerous precedent of government overreach. Dude, if I had a dollar, forget a dollar, a dime, for every time a conservative said something about government overreach, especially when it's not legit. If anything, you know, the idea is supposed to be that our government's supposed to protect us, right? So it's literally the thing that's most in the power of the government, that's most delegated to the government, right? Promoting general welfare, it's literally a delegated power of the federal government in the Constitution. Read it, okay? So how is that a government overreach? But HPV, that's human papillomavirus, it's basically a group of like 100 strains of, of STIs, okay? And... Uh, she's claiming that it's not contagious, which is not true. It's highly contagious. HPV is super contagious, and so therefore it does pose a danger to the public very clearly. But, and we will get to this later on, even if it doesn't deter, uh, pose a danger to the public, I and I'll get to this later, I still think that the government has uh, you know, an interest and the power to even then mandate vaccines. And I'll get into that later on. And so... Again, saying I had a terrible reaction in the HPV shot, of course, is incredibly vague and doesn't even tell me anything. Like, what happened specifically? You know, wh what is your terrible reaction? Did you faint? Did you have some arm pain? Did you have, like, fever or something like that? 
that's a really small thing to go through in exchange for never developing any of the plethora of cancers, which we will get into in a second, that can result from HPV, right? So what is your terrible reaction? A lot of people, you know, will have small sorts of, uh, uh, you know, pain thresholds, or not even pain thresholds, but just experience thresholds, I guess. Like if you faint or, I don't know, if you uh, if your arm hurts really bad or something like that. Like imagine comparing that to getting cervical cancer or back of throat cancer or ass cancer, or any of those cancers. Just try comparing those things. Okay, but we, so first of all, she could be lying because we don't even know what that means. She says she got it when it was 16. Um, the vaccine wasn't available until uh, 2006, which means she had to be at least 17 years old. So there's that as well. Also, uh, worth it to point out and important to point out, Candace Owens is a serial liar. She lies about everything and everything. You know, obviously, you know, think about uh, the whole Kyle Kalinske Politicon stuff, of course. But anyways, so someone responds saying, sorry, Candace, but HPV is contagious, which is true, and may kill. 5% of the infection develop a cancer. And then she responds saying, 0.01% of women in America die annually from cervical cancer. If you are telling me 100% of women now need to be forced to take a shot based on the death of 0.01% of the population, then may I pray you never, ever, ever work in any positions of authority. Now, obviously, I would flip that on this person. Um, but this is a really, really stupid way of looking at this, okay? And the reason for that is, first of all, 0.01% of women dying is a lot of people, okay? That's a lot of people. There's thousands that die each year because of this, okay? But... The problem is, okay, the problem is that the way you're doing the math is totally off. So you don't develop cancer until like middle life. I, I looked up the numbers. I think it's like 34 through 40 or something like that. Somewhere around that range is where most of the cervical cancers basically uh, developed. Um, so having people under that age included in the percentage of women is stupid. Um, because all women are at risk of developing it at later in life. So it makes no sense to include people who are like age 10 and under because those people 10 and under won't develop cervical cancer at any of those ages. So you would have to change those numbers, of course. And, it, and you know, you start to get to a much higher percentage. You talk about tens of thousands a year we're talking about here. So in other words, you can't get cervical cancer at the age of 10, you know? So including those people in your statistic is dumb. That's a dumb way of looking at it. You're going to get a stupid, uh, you're going to get a, a, ba a bad percentage looking at it that way. Um, but if we just go to the CDC, you know, the Centers for Disease, Disease and Control, uh, Disease Control and Prevention, that is, <clears throat> says almost all cervical cancers caused by HPV, some cancers of the vulva, vagina, penis, anus, and oral pharynx, back of throat, including the base of the tongue and tonsils are also caused by HPV. Research is still being done to understand how and to what extent HPV causes cancers. In general, HPV is thought to be responsible for more than 90% of anal and cervical cancers, about 70% of vaginal and vulvar, can vulvar cancers, and 60% of penile cancers. Cancers in the back of the throat, oral pharynx, traditionally have been caused by tobacco and alcohol, but recent studies show that about 60-70% to 70 of cancers of the oral pharynx may be linked to HPV. That is a really, really big thing. So, you know, HPV essentially, it eventually develops into cancer. A lot of HPVs don't, you know, have any symptoms, so you don't even know you have it, and it's like this silent little thing. And, um, you know, when we have, when we go to the numbers here on the CDC, these are the numbers here. Uh, you know, the, the on the right, they have estimated number prob probably caused by any HPV type. And, uh, you know, they've got, in total, for male, it's 11,300. For females, 2,200. And this is uh, this is per year, folks. Or, sorry. Here, uh, here for the totals, it's female, 20,700. Male, 14,100. So, it's insane to look at that many cancers, okay? Look at, like, cancers, okay? Cancers are very serious stuff. And cancer treatment is incredibly expensive, too, by the way especially if you're going into chemo. And that'll, you know, sort of go into another point that I'm making. But you're talking about a total of 34,800 that are probably caused by HPV. So the ideal, uh, you know, world that we live in, you can take vaccines, right? This is a dream world, right? Think about this. A dream world ideal is 
we can live in a world where you can take a vaccine that will prevent cancer from happening. Okay, and the, now the problem with that, obviously, is there's a trillion different cancers of all your different body parts, right? They're all, you know, different forms, uh, different proteins and stuff, and so they can, you know, all uh, mutate in different ways. But, you know, there'd be this long list of vaccines you could get to prevent, you know, cancers like that. Especially ones that, let's say, like, there's a lot of people in your family, they get lung cancer or whatever, you could get that kind of vaccine. This is a scenario where we have it where we could almost eradicate all of these cancers. Because as we looked at... It said, what did it say? What percentage? It said it's believed HPV is thought to be responsible for more than 90% of anal and cervical cancers, 70% of vaginal vulvar, vulvar cancers, and 60% of penile cancers. I mean, think about how many, think about how many cancers are being eradicated by the HPV vaccine. Because if you completely prevent HPV from ever being had, then it can never develop into fucking cancer. And so you're talking about being able to eradicate entire cancers. 90% of anal and cervical cancers are caused by HPV, okay? Imagine eradicating those completely. That would be a huge step for society. But we are legitimately fucking ourselves over completely because there are people like this. People like Candace Owens. I mean, look at the tweet down below. It says, the doctor wanted my sons to get the vaccination. I refused it. I'm not buying what they're selling. So there's lunatics like this. There's lunatics like this, okay? Probably some 40-year-old Trump-supporting, you know, moron, idiot, believes in faith healing, when we could literally completely eradicate, you know, certain types of cancers. That's insane. But because people are morons like this who are saying, oh, 0.01% of women die annually from cervical cancer, which I don't even remember the number that die from cervical cancer each year. Um, but the number of people who are diagnosed with it in women is 20,700. If you don't think that 20,700 a year in cancer is, is serious, is a lot, you, I mean, obviously you're, you're either crazy or you don't, don't understand. And again, doing the statistic of 0.01% of women is dumb, because you're including all of these people who are not in the age range. So it's, it's, a, it's a very bad way of looking at it, once again. But we're on the verge of completely, you know, eradicating these cancers, pretty much. But no, you know, she had... Guys, you can't... We can't, as a society, we can't eradicate it. Because Candace Owens had a terrible reaction to the HPV vaccine she got when she was 16 even though the vaccine wasn't even available to the public until she was 17. So, well, we got to throw in the towel. You know what I'm saying? We got to throw in the towel, obviously. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's what we have to do at this point because Candace Owens had a terrible reaction, so it's all over. But it's like, seriously, we're on. I, it's truly mind-boggling to me because we could eradicate certain cancers. Essentially, cervical cancer could pretty much entirely be eradicated. 10% of what, what it would be is left. That's not caused by HPV. That's insane to me. And this is very, very worrisome that there are morons like this. And there are so many idiots who agree with people like this. It's crazy to me. The idea of like getting a vaccine, okay, at the age of like 12, right? Completely prevents all of those cancers, cervical cancer completely almost. That's insane. That's amazing. But wow. And then also I want to touch on uh, where she says that, you know, mandating vaccination against these that are not contagious and therefore pose no danger to the public is a dangerous precedent. No, it's absolutely not. So there was actually a story. So you guys probably know tetanus, right? You, everyone gets the, uh, you know, the Tdap vaccine and then you're supposed to get a Tdap bo TD booster every 10 years. The Tdap is tetanus, diphtheria, and pertussis. Pertussis being whooping cough and diphtheria is like where you get like this white thing at the back of your mouth or back of your throat. So uh, it's supposed to protect you against all these things when you're a baby. You have a pretty rigorous schedule, um, including measles, rumps, and mumps, and uh, rubella, and all this other stuff uh, that you get. It's pretty, you get it pretty, you know, rigorously because when you're a baby, your antibodies don't remember. They don't have the memory power that they do when you're older. But uh, tetanus, you know, you know, if you ever cut yourself outside somewhere, you don't have the shot in the past five or ten years. You definitely want to get it because there's basically this. Um, Thing that exists in soil mainly it's called clostridium tetani 
it attaches to your nerve endings and there's no cure for it. So you have to survive it. It has about a 30% mortality rate as well as, you know, if you survive, there's a good chance that you are going to have some problems afterwards. What it does is it attaches to your nerve endings, right? Once the tetani gets inside of your wound and attaches to your nerve endings, it really, really quickly, very rapidly multiplies, attaches to your nerve endings, and you can't control your movements anymore. You're spasming uncontrollably, talking about bone fractures, all kinds of stuff. It usually uh, makes you stop breathing. So you have to be intubated, which means you're put in a br uh, under a breathing tube, you know, to help you breathe because you can't breathe properly. So this happened to a little boy who I think was six years old in Oregon. And uh, what ended up happening was it was a multiple month, re you know, recovery. It always takes multiple months to get better from it because there's no cure for those nerve endings. You have to basically, uh, you have to wait for like your nerve endings to essentially regenerate. So you have to go through all of that and survive. You have to have earplugs in. You're spasming uncontrollably. Bone fractures everywhere. It's horrible. It's really terrible. Um, <clears throat> that cost about over a million dollars in care. Okay. So should the government mandate that a child as a baby, right, and when they're growing uh, as a kid, you know, when they're 11, 12, and 6, and 7, and whatnot, get the tetanus vaccine? Absolutely. It saves a ton of money, okay, which is bearing on the state, okay, and the government, and the people itself. And then also, there's an incredible torture that the kid goes through. The person goes through, whoever it is, gets tetanus, okay? Now, tetanus is mostly gone because of the vaccine. Um, but I think that the government is certainly well within its power to mandate it. Uh, you know, luckily, here in California, most schools require that to be, you know, you have those vaccinations before you can even be admitted into any of the schools, you know, elementary school and stuff, which is awesome. That's great. <laughs> Every, you know, the government, the federal government should mandate that structure, you know, you have to get it when you're a baby and everything. And, you know, the three times that you have to get the Tdap and everything, um, because it is serious. Okay. These things are serious and preventable. And before vaccines existed, people died of measles and smallpox, and that's not a time that we want to go back to, but vaccines are important. Vaccines save lives. Um, and there are vaccines for a lot of different things, of course. And the HPV is just another one that's very important. So Candace Owens dipping to a new low, completely dipping to a new low. This is complete insanity that we have reached. Um, <clears throat> again, I want to one more time repeat to you that a lot of people will be very vague about their experiences. As we see here, I had a terrible reaction. What does that even mean? Uh, also, a lot of people will attribute other stuff that happens to them that's completely unrelated to the vaccine because everyone's going through something, right, uh, to that vaccine. And uh, a lot of people are unfortunately just very dumb. But vaccines are very important and they save lives.